This is section three, or in other words, the sixth section of our video course. And in this section, we're going to take a look at testing beyond the unit test. We're going to discuss instrumentation tests for integration testing. And then we're going to have an example where we write an instrumentation test by hand. Next, we're going to take a look at Espresso, which is a UI based tool that we can use to write an instrumentation test. It's relatively new. The UI tool is in beta in version 2.2 of Android Studio, but in practice I've found that it works very well and you can write a test fairly quickly. Next, we're going to take a look at how we can take an instrumentation test, whether we wrote it by hand or wrote it with Espresso, and run it in Firebase with multiple device configurations. So in this video, we're going to explore an Android instrumentation test. First, what are instrumentation tests? Why do we want to do an instrumentation test? Where do instrumentation tests live? And finally, in the next video, an example of an instrumentation test. So, what are instrumentation tests? They can be functional tests that validate that you can do some kind of feature in our application. Remember the triangle of features, quality, and time? Pick any two, but one must be quality. If we're talking about functions or features, we're thinking about something that the user can do. So in this kind of test, we want to automate what the user does with the application on the device. In other words, we want to enter text, we want to press a button, we want to validate results. An integration test is then going to, it's very similar to a functional test, but it's going to take a look at the integration across layers from UI layer to service layer, and then DAO as I have set up my application. Unit testing was looking at each of the classes in these layers individually, but with an integration test, we're actually looking at the layers as they integrate together. You might remember from one of the first videos that we had in section one, we took a look at a quality triangle where we have GUI on the top, integration in the middle, and unit on the bottom. Now, we don't want to say that unit testing is the least important because it's on the bottom. It's exactly the opposite. We're looking at the volume of the triangle that unit testing occupies. And if you see that the triangle uh, gets bigger as it goes down, we know that we want to put most of our emphasis on unit testing. Uh, and then we GUI testing and integration testing are important, but not as important as unit testing. And that's why the vast majority of these videos have, been, have focused on unit testing. But at the same time, we want to talk about GUI and integration testing because they are also important, just not as important as unit testing. And that's what these videos are talking about in this section. So why do we want to do instrumentation tests? One major reason is we want to reduce the need for mocked code. We saw some examples with Mockito in a previous section. And we know that we can use Mockito to mock out some Android framework classes, like parcelable, context, other things like that. But we also know that we really shouldn't spend a lot of time mocking classes that we did not write. With an instrumentation test, it's essentially a unit test, but it also gives us some of these Android classes, like, uh, like context, also, uh, it gives us access to an activity. We can fire things like intents into an activity. And we know that an intent is another one of these Android classes that we get. So an instrumentation test is a unit, it uses the unit test framework, but gives us these Android tools as well. We can write these tests based on the application lifecycle. We can think about on create, on start, on pause, on resume. And then we have to think about what these instrumentation tests all have in common. With our unit test, we didn't have to have an emulator running. And if we don't need the emulator, let's keep it as a unit test, because we know the emulator does take some time and overhead to bring up. Uh, but on the other hand, if we do need the emulator to run so that we can interact with an activity, then an instrumentation test is the way to go. And as I discussed, we have access to things like context and parcelable. We can even do things like send broadcasts. And if we can send broadcasts, we can think about our broadcast receivers. If you've ever had your phone playing a song and then you go into your car and suddenly uh, 
the song is playing over Bluetooth and it knows that automatically, that's because your device received a broadcast that said, hey, there's a Bluetooth connection available, and then it's, it's able to pick that up. Similarly, it can listen for Wi-Fi access, it can listen for plugged-in charging. A lot of these life cycle events will trigger things to happen in our Android applications, and these are things we can think about when we write an instrumentation test. So where do we put the instrumentation tests? If you've looked at Android Studio, you've noticed there are actually two different test folders. One is just called test, and that's the one we've used so far that has all of our unit tests. Another one is called Android test, and this is where we put our instrumentation tests. So this is kind of a special blessed directory which knows that, hey, instrumentation tests will live here, and they will have access to the Android framework. How are instrumentation tests built? Well, they have their own manifest file, which is generated automatically. If you need to, you can make tweaks to this, because when it actually builds the testing APK, it will merge everything together. Then it's going to run the tests with something called instrumentation test runner. That will start the Android process and invoke the onCreate method. We know that onCreate is the method that is called that initializes one of our activities. To create a new instrumentation test, we do it similar to how we've done it with a unit test. We simply navigate to that Android test directory and choose to make a new class. There are some special decorations we have to put on that class, which we'll take a look at in the next slide. There's also a really quick way to do it with a shortcut. If you're in a class that you want to test, for example, an activity, hold Control shift t and that will create a new test class to test the activity that you're in. A nice shortcut if you forget where you are or maybe you have a very long and complicated project with a whole lot of folders. Inside the instrumentation test, we need to use an annotation that we've seen earlier, and that is at runwith. And at runwith is going to say runwith Android JUnit 4.class. Android JUnit 4 is simply JUnit 4 but extended with some Android-specific things that will help us write an Android test. So an extension or a, an addition to JUnit. Now, here's an important thing that's relatively new. We used to have to extend something called instrumentation test case. We don't have to do that anymore. Uh, as of uh, recent versions of Android, we just use something called an activity test rule and we annotate it with the at rule annotation. Now I have a sample line here. What you'll see is at rule, then public activity test rule. That's the, that's the type that we need to declare our variable. Then very important, we have to give it a generic identifier. And you see the generic identifier here is search plants activity, which in our example that we're gonna do next, that's the activity that we're going to test. By giving it this generic identifier, what that does is it gives us access to that specific activity class. Not even, not just the, the, the superclass activity, but this specific class that we want to test. And then we declare a variable called mActivityRule. If we call mActivityRule.getActivity, it's going to return to us whatever type is specified in this generic identifier, which is, guess what? the class that we wrote. So that's how we can get access to the specific activity that we're testing within this completely separate test class. It makes for a nice, it makes for a nice separation of concerns so that our test isn't, isn't directly hard-coded in the activity or vice versa. We simply use the sanitation and then we get access to our activity. A nice clean way to do it. So, when we're writing our activity, we might want to think about some methods that we might want to call in a test because our test that we're writing, our instrumentation test, since it has access to this activity, is also going to have access to any non-private methods of that activity.